Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from Jesse Biro Labs. For more information and to download the source code of this video, you can visit us at www.jcbirolabs.org. We also provide online training, online coaching classes, help in technical assignments. We also do freelance projects based on MATLAB, machine learning, data science, Python, etc. So, if you have any such requirement, then you can contact us at, uh, through our website, which is www.jcbrolabs.org, or you can also mail us at jcbrolabs at gmail.com. So, in our last video, uh, we talked about the uh, design equations of the boost converter. Converter. The link of the uh, video is uh, given in the description of this video. So in that uh, in the design process of boost converter, we identify how to obtain the value of L and how to decide the value of C in the uh, boost converter design. And we came to know the uh, uh, design of a boost converter consists of like this. So we have a power supply here, and then we have an inductor, and here we have a switch. Uh, okay, so and then we have a diode here, and at the output of the diode we have a capacitor, and across the capacitor we have a load resistance. Uh, so here it is C, here it is L, and here is the input voltage V in, and the output voltage is taken across uh, this load resistance that is plus minus V out, and we understood like uh, this uh, output voltage this v out v out is greater than that of the input voltage in case of a uh, boost converter and here the switch uh, here is the switch this switch keeps on on and off at an frequency f okay and the duty cycle of this square wave because it is a square wave or we can say a pwm wave the duty cycle of this pwm wave decides like how much voltage uh, will get at the output so ultimately if we keep uh, this f as a constant and vary this duty cycle then the output voltage can vary uh, for a specific uh, value okay uh, so in uh, uh, our previous video we discussed about let's say if we want to change this V out from let's say uh, from V out from uh, 5 volt to we want to increase to 10 volt let's say if the input voltage is some let's say 3 volt is there so we want to increase like this so what we have to do we have to change the duty cycle in accordance with uh, so that this particular relation can hold or we can increase the uh, voltage so uh, in order to do that we have to change it so but uh, there is uh, uh, we want manual operation as low as possible so there is a concept like closed loop control of uh, this boost converter so what happen in closed loop control uh, suppose our uh, desired value which we want to get at the output changes so this PID controller or through feedback mechanism it automatically change the duty cycle in order to get the desired value so the uh, block diagram of this closed loop control is very simple here we have a V reference voltage right uh, this is the required voltage we want, which we want to generate at the output of the uh, boost converter and then uh, we have mostly a PI or PID controller so we are writing it in a generic form PID and then it goes to the boost converter and the output of the boost converter goes back to uh, as the feedback in order to check uh, this PID value okay so what does this PID value do so this PID change the duty cycle which is being applied on the boost and it keeps on uh, controlling the output voltage so let's say uh, a V reference or the input to the boost converter let's say 12 volt and let's say we want to generate 15 volt so uh, PID will change uh, duty cycle automatically to give V out near about uh, 15 volt within our tolerable range and then let's say after some time we want to change it to 30 volt 
so it will change it automatically and the output voltage now will be 30 so uh, that's why this uh, uh, this particular kind of closed loop is plays a very important role in order to control the output it also uh, reduces the limitation of the or the dependency of the boost converter on the load resistance in our previous video we uh, we learned that if we change the value of r suppose uh, uh, we have designed this value of l and c for a specific value of rl so if rl uh, if we change the value of r the output voltage doesn't uh, uh, or it doesn't remain the same as the design value so in the case of closed loop control we can also reduce the dependency of this output voltage to the load resistance because the pid can change it automatically but obviously it will be uh, within a, a certain range of load resistance it is not like a for infinite to infinite because the duty cycle can vary from let's say 0 to 1 only okay so we have a limitation here but uh, uh, we can reduce this particular limitation by designing this boost converter very carefully so in this video uh, what we'll do we will uh, uh, keep uh, the same values which we used in our previous video and then now we will design a converter uh, here in simulink so if we go to the previous video and we'll find the value of l and c okay these were the value of uh, l L was 96 micro and then capstance was of 48 microfarad. So now let's design it on Simulink. So open Simulink and create a model. Okay. Now let's first save it. Uh, go to desktop and let's save it boost PID okay. 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 change the workspace so that it doesn't okay let's first change the workspace and now save it with the name of boost pid okay. now we go to the library simulink library and we need several aspects first of all we need power gui so search on power gui here you will find it uh, let's drop it on this model okay and then we will go for uh, voltage source remember uh, we are going for voltage source so there are two kind of voltage source semi scape voltage source and the power system voltage source so we are designing this converter using power system uh, component so remember this power system component will not connect with the semi scape component so make sure you select all the power system components only now voltage source now we need RLC branch and we need three instances of it we will create it later and then we need a idle switch instead of idle switch you can have uh, the MOSFET or anything but we will try to design with the idle switch and then we need a diode okay here so let's first create it okay i uh, will change uh, its value to 12 volt we have a 12 volt input supply and at the output we want a 30 volt or we can change it to that one uh, by the reference voltage so let's first change it to l and the value of it is, i think it was 96 microfarad so let's have a look yep 96 microfarad apply okay and let's change it to l only okay is now connected and here we need a idle switch in between so right click and rotate now we need a diode here diode is connected and now we need l and c so first we need a c and the value of it was 48 microfarad okay the value of l was a 96 micro henry 
Okay, and let's rotate it. Right C on here. And now let's rotate to the R. Let's say 50 ohm. And let's rotate it. And let's save the file. Now we want to measure the voltage across this R. So for that we will need a voltage measure. Okay, it will give the value of R and we want to visualize this voltage across uh, uh, the scope. Okay, so we will need a scope there. Okay, go to scope. Go to sync and then scope. We will simulate this file for 0 0.05 only because otherwise it will take a lot of time to get simulate. Here we have a power GU. Okay, now let's connect the uh, pulse at this G. So we are uh, creating a PID. So first of all, let's take the PID. Okay, we go here PID and the continuous. We'll select this PID. Okay, and let's make it a little bit up so that we can get this space the downside yeah we will revert it back uh, flip block okay now we'll need adder and subtractor uh, we'll make it a double click and minus plus Okay, we'll flip it. Okay, so here we'll provide reference and here we'll go the output of this uh, boost converter. So this is the output of boost converter. It will go here and the subtractor output go here and here we'll provide a reference voltage. So we can supply the reference voltage through a step signal. Mm. So we can visualize the effect of change in the step value or change in the requirement we can say. So let's say our requirement goes from 20 to 30 volt. Okay, and then step time because we are simulating it for 0 0.05. So let's say we'll simulate it for 0 0.1 second only. And then and the output of this will go to the PWM converter. So there is a block which convert uh, from duty cycle to PWM. Here we'll have it. So in this input is the uh, duty cycle and output is the PWM signal. Here and the output will go here. Uh, one important thing is to understand like the output of this PID can go anywhere. So while the input of this uh, duty cycle can go within the range of 0 to 1. Okay, one more thing we designed this for 25 kilohertz. So let's set the frequency of 25 kilohertz now. The input value of this duty cycle should be between 0 to 1, but the value of this PID can go higher. So we need some saturation block here. So we can limit the output uh, of this PID controller with the help of this saturation block and we'll find it in this continuous. So here we have a saturation. Okay, let's flip it again. Okay, now double click on this saturation. You will find the maximum value which we are allowing, let's say 0.95. You can make it one there is no limitation on it and here we can have minimum value 0.05 so 
it will make sure the session will make sure the output of this PID goes within the range of 0.05 to 0.95 only uh, which is the conditions for this PWM generator so everything looks fine the only thing is um, uh, the variable or the parameter of this PI controller let's say we are using PI controller or let's say PID D uh, 0 now the only thing is to tune uh, this PID controller so that um, uh, we can get the desired value of this P and I so right now we are not talking about the tuning of the controller so you can uh, for that we have another video uh, how to tune this uh, parameters of this PID control using genetic algorithm or any other algorithm you can try that right now we'll take these values of PI as as it is and we'll try to simulate whether we are getting the desired result or not okay and let's save it okay that is saying access permission denied why well, let's save as, as a different one okay now uh, let's see once again if all the values are fine 12 volt 96 micro entry 48 microfarad and r is 50 ohm that's fine now let's see the output here okay we can have a numeric indicator as well uh, will help us to visualize the thing numerically so we can display the numerical value here okay now let's save it and let's run if everything goes fine it will start simulating let's simulate for 0.1 second and let's start so first the output voltage nearly 19 volt and then after 50 percent it has to 30 volt so at 30 volt it is not stable so let's see the output okay okay do one thing go to the settings of this scope and go to history and untick this one limit data source apply and then go to style you can change the line width as well apply okay okay let's save it and let's run it again we'll see for 30 volt as a set point uh, this boost converter is unstable and there is a large fluctuations in it so this is uh, due to the fact uh, that we have not used the proper values of uh, this kp and ki right so output of pid or this kind of closed loop system totally depends on the value of this p and i so let's change it to 0.25 and let's see what happens and these are some random values which we talk, uh, which we tried by trial and error but in real research uh, this has to be done from the optimization algorithm or with some procedure okay so right now we are not talking about the optimization algorithm if, if you want to do that you can let us know by contacting us through our mail so let's uh, run it again so well fine uh, it is nearly stable around 20 volt there is less error but there is a uh, problem still uh, it is a fluctuation but uh, fluctuations are small around this 30 volt one more problem is like there is a spike as soon as the ID start control it is swinging up to 120 volt so that may be crazy this may lead to uh, uh, it may lead to damage to some other component which we, if we are going to connect this boost converter to some output so obviously all these things can be controlled with the proper uh, proper values of this uh, controller uh, proper values of this PID let's uh, change the value of integral and let's see if something happens yeah. but it reduces uh, it introduce the large amount of error around 20 yep 
it's still not satisfactory let's try to increase the value of this i to let's say 2 and let's see what happens okay it is nearly the same uh, we can try last one uh, both values of 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay right now we are doing with trial and error so the design will remain same I am repeating it again the only thing is you have to um, uh, tune this PID controller Now the ripples are less. By tuning uh, the uh, PID control, you can reduce this overshoot. You can also reduce this error or the unstable behavior of this boost converter in case of closed loop. Okay, so now let's try to change the value of this R as well. Uh, let's say uh, we change the value of 30 ohm because in our previous video, we I think uh, we have seen if this R value gets changed, we don't get the desired value. Uh, at the output or the output doesn't follow the rules okay so let's see yeah it is nearly same so it has the effect of this r variation in r has reduced uh, drastically because just by changing the value of r this uh, voltage is not no longer varying it it is uh, getting a spike and then it is uh, slowly coming down to the reference voltage okay and let's say if we reduce the value of r to 1 ohm let's see what happens yeah it's totally absurd it's become unstable for the current value of it has become unstable for the current value of p and p and i okay so it is very much clear like you have to tune the controller in order to get the desired values from it let's say 30 ohm apply and okay so this is how we design a PID controller or a closed loop control for a boost converter in order to get the desired value and one thing we notice like in order to get the satisfactory result from this boost converter in a closed loop configuration we need to tune the PID controller properly and there are several tuning methods like Ziegler Nicolas through optimization and some other ways you can tune this PID controllers okay so yeah it's uh, absurd it's unstable for 30 value for the value of R of 3 so there's a lot of uh, things uh, which we can uh, do with the help of it so if you have any i hope you understood a lot and you have many queries so if you have any you can let us know by contacting uh, uh, by uh, commenting below this video or if you have suggestion then you can also let us know finally we also provide online training help in technical assignments we also do freelance projects based on machine learning embedded system python data science etc so if you have any such requirement then you can contact us at through our website which is www.gacbrolabs.org or you can also uh, you can also send your queries through uh, at our mail which is at which is jcbrolabs at gmail.com so that's it for this video thank you